Hey, everybody, it's Peter Coffin. Is streaming harder than a real job? Yes, a real job can be gruesome. A real job can make you very tired. But a real job doesn't suck the soul out of you. You know what I mean? In the same way that nine hours of streaming absolutely will. Not, not exactly the answer I expected. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe that was taken out of context a little bit. But let's, let's maybe check out a little bit more. No, 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 no. Social battery wise, unless you're in retail, it's very different. You're out of touch. I'm going to die, dude. There's motherfuckers who are accountants in here and they're misunderstanding what I'm saying. A real job does not expend your social battery in the same fucking way as someone who did a sales job, a real job, okay? As someone who did, did both, nine hours of, of constant performance and people pleasing taps you out from social scenarios. After nine hours of that, I could probably do fucking physical labor. It would not bother me, but I can't fucking do more social shit. That's my point. There are obviously real jobs out there that are good comparisons. Service sector, people pleasing jobs would be very similar. But like if you're an accountant or if you're even like in sales, my interactions with clients was limited, way more limited than like constantly having to do this for nine hours with like a back and forth interaction for nine hours. That's what that's what like sucks your your social battery and you just tap out after it ah so uh, that didn't make it any better i've worked a lot of really terrible jobs in my life because I, I didn't come from money i wasn't given any opportunities based on uh who i was related to or um who i knew uh instead i, I did things like work at fast food work in warehouses where i had 20 hours of overtime a week uh, I've worked in sales, car sales, which is, by the way, uh, soul crushing. I've worked in call centers, which, by the way, much more soul crushing than even selling cars uh, and, and streaming. While I don't want to pretend that it's like something that takes no effort. It's a creative endeavor. It takes your brain. It takes energy. Going to a theme park and enjoying yourself takes a lot of energy. I'm not going to pretend that doing nine hours of anything is just flat out like easy and fun. It is work. I'm not going to claim it's not work. But he makes this point that it's about his social battery. And like he has the same emotional labor requirements as like a service sector or retail worker. Which let me give you a little bit of context as to what that is. The term emotional labor is a year older than I am. It was coined by Arlie Hothschild uh, in a book called The Managed Heart. It's a pretty good book. Um, there's some aspects of it I don't completely agree with, but the concept overall I think is a worthwhile thing to at least investigate. Emotional labor specifically refers to regulating or managing emotional expressions with others as part of one's professional work role. I, I am very much sympathetic to the idea of a social battery. I'm not going to pretend I'm not. I love social situations. I love being around people, but I don't have the ability to continually do it. And when I did uh, my Vosh reaction stream the other day, I completely sympathize with the idea that it takes a lot of effort to stream. I don't want to pretend that it's nothing. I'm not going to be one of those people who's like, eh, it's just, hey, who do you think you are, you fucking guy? It doesn't take any effort to sit in a chair and talk for nine. I'm like, no. It does take effort. Like I said, it takes effort to go to a theme park and enjoy yourself. It expends energy. Social situations expend energy. I'm not going to pretend that this doesn't take energy. But as somebody who has worked in fast food, in straightforward retail, uh, in similar situations, the emotional labor of a service sector or retail job is essentially... The understanding that no matter what the customer does, you pretty much can't react how you want to. Like, let's say you have a customer who comes in and uh, berates you, treats you badly. They say unnecessarily mean things to you. They've got a bad attitude. They act like everything's your fault, um, blah, blah, blah. You, as a representative of the company you're working for, have to act like that's okay. You have to essentially act like it's fine that they're horrible to you. 
And that sucks. It really is very difficult to do day in, day out. This applies to, to a lot of jobs I've been in. Straightforward retail and fast food, like I said. Any sales job that's forward facing. And all of it involves a customer berating you at some point. Um, call center is probably the most frequent. Fast food um, happens a fair amount. Really across the board, all of them, it happens a fair amount. And you have to deal. There's no chance you're not going to deal with it. And it's going to be stuff that's not your fault. Oftentimes, stuff that customers are mad about in those situations have nothing to do with you and everything to do with um, supply chain issues, how uh, the system works that's been set up, procedures, rules you're supposed to follow. Stuff like that is usually what customers are mad about. And you, as an employee, can do nothing about those things. That's not what somebody like Hassan does. If a chatter comes in and says something shitty to him, there's no procedure where he has to act a certain way. He can act as shitty to anybody in the chat as he wants. And, and that emotional labor, uh, it's just not there. Like, I've been in radio before. It's a job. It takes real work. Uh, making these videos, it takes effort. But it's a kind of effort and a kind of expense of energy that feels good. It's creative labor. It's the kind of thing that gets you closer to your essence as a human being. The type of thing that relieves alienation to some extent. Getting your opinion out there and having it heard uh, without somebody, like, interfering... Being understood for real feels good. It's not the same kind of effort as exchanging your time for some company that doesn't give a shit about you or what you think to act like their policies or supply chain or whatever isn't a problem to people who think that it's a problem. And that doesn't mean that streaming is not without its emotional hazards. Certainly it is. I'm not pretending that that is not the case. But to... People in the world who do real jobs, this kind of shit sounds so detached from reality. I have worked since I was 14 years old. I got a work permit to be a janitor at an elementary school when I was 14. Why? Because I didn't have any fucking money. I didn't come from money. I didn't come from anything. If I wanted something, uh, my parents couldn't get it for me. I had to earn money for it. And while streaming, I agree, is something that takes effort and probably does drain your social battery. It's not like that. And this isn't to argue that like Hassan isn't exploited by the big streaming companies or anything like Twitch, YouTube, all that. They do exploit him. It's not like he retains the full value of the labor. The platforms don't just take the money for the expenses of streaming. They take money for a profit. So I'm not pretending that like Hassan is just some straightforwardly evil person for thinking that there is some kind of problem here. But he overstates it, it, it to an extreme extent, to be frank. I've said a lot of times in the past that... Being a content creator is a lot like being an Uber driver. Uh, you're legally self-employed, but you do retain a lot of the problems of being an employee. You don't necessarily get to set everything. Like, sure, yeah, you can work when you want to work, but if you want to make money, there's a certain way you have to do it. There's incentives to follow in order to get the rewards. Those incentives manage you in the same way a boss might manage you in a different job. So I, I want to say I, I'm not entirely unsympathetic to some of the underpinning things being said here, but we're talking about a millionaire claiming his job is more socially draining than like a service sector job. Doing anything for nine hours does take something out of you. It's it's not going to not. Like, you could play a video game sitting on the couch for nine hours and be tired afterwards. You know why? It does take mental energy. You do have to expend energy processing, thinking, making choices. But comparing it in that way, I, I, I don't like using the word privileged very much. But if there is a way to more immediately come off as privileged than that, 
I don't know what it is. Am I saying that there's no discussion about the energy spent on streaming? Absolutely not. But this is not that discussion. This is also why uh, when I make any arguments about socialism or against capitalism, I trend towards math as opposed to ethics. I don't like talking about what's fair. I think that you sound like a baby when you do that. Yeah, it's not fair. Yeah. This is a discussion that is just going to turn people off and make people think that socialism is stupid. That's all I think I have on that one. Uh, I just released a new very important documentary called Plato is a Bitch, AI and Bomber Guy. We had the premiere and through typos, I think I'm going to start telling people to lick the video instead of like them because shit, that's a lot funnier. So um, go watch that documentary if you're interested in a more mathematical critique of capitalism, as well as um, a critique of how ethics are used to kind of undermine critique of capitalism, uh, even when people think that they're doing a good job critiquing capitalism. Uh, so lick this video, lick the documentary, big slurps on both buttons, subscribe to both channels. Uh, I hope you have a good day. Bye.